third Sunday in Lent, year C. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people arrived and told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with that of their sacrifices. At this he said to them, Do you suppose these Galileans who suffered like that were greater sinners than any other Galileans? They were not, I tell you. But no, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 on whom the Tower of Fitzsilloam fell and killed them, do you suppose that they were more guilty than all the other people living in Jerusalem? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. He told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. He came to look for fruit on it, but found none. He said to the man who looked after the vineyard, Look here, for three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and finding none. Cut it down. Why should it be taking up the ground? Sir, the man replied, leave it one more year and give me time to dig round it and manure it. It may bear fruit next year. If not, then you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Once upon a time, there was this preacher who felt so fed up with his job that he decided to try his hand at something else. He went for a job at the local zoo, but the position had just gone. However, the local gorilla, the children's favorite, had just died. But not having an immediate replacement, the minister was asked if he would fill in, don the gorilla costume and do a stint at entertaining the children. He reluctantly agreed. He was a great hit with the children, however. On one occasion, he jumped up onto the trapeze bar and began wildly swinging back and forth with great enthusiasm to the added laughter and cheers of the children. Suddenly, he slipped off the bar and went flying over into the adjoining cage where a hungry-looking tiger was crouched over him with a large paw on his chest. Forgetting that he was supposed to be a gorilla, he shouted at the top of his voice, Help! Help! Get me out of here! The tiger retorted, Keep quiet, you fool! I'm Father Kelly! So, so, whether we're dressed as a gorilla or a tiger in uniform or civvies, we're all in the same boat or in the same cage when it comes to ongoing repentance. I think it's so easy to look out onto the world and go on a tirade against those who apparently commit awful crimes and forget to take a long, hard look at ourselves. But surely that's what Lent is all about. It is said that comparisons are odious. The temptation is to minimize, even justify our own sins when comparing them to the bigger sins of others. The apostles seem to have fallen into this trap when they seem to suggest that the 18 people on whom the Tower of Siloam fell must have been worse sinners than the rest of the people in Jerusalem. Jesus completely disagrees. Do you remember some years ago when the Haitian earthquake happened? Well, one very insensitive pastor in America was intimating that because the indigenous people were into voodoo and witchcraft, they left themselves open to this disaster. That sounds to me like a very much sweeping statement. Yes, I have no doubt there are much worse people in the world than you and me. What we've got to do, however, is to pray that they will receive the grace of God to turn their lives around. 
Our Lady of Fatima asks us to add the following prayer to each decade of the Rosary. O oh Jesus, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. Our prayers and fasting will help bring people back to God. Back to Fatima again. In 1917, Our Lady foretold to the seers that the war will end soon. That was the First World War. But she added that a worse war was coming. But if people repented and fast, they could actually avert it. Saint Teresa prayed for a notorious death row criminal that he would turn to God before his execution. And as he ascended the scaffold, he was seen to kiss the crucifix. That was all what she needed to prove her prayers did not go unheeded. Our prayers for sinners won't go unheeded either. The parable of the barren fig tree brings out God's undying patience with all of us, but it's a timely warning as well. He gives us ample opportunities to repent and sort ourselves out, but if we keep putting it off, we may run out of time. The longer we leave it, the harder it gets. The words of the great Saint Robert Bellarmine, however, should fill us with hope. This is what he says. He who commits sin does what is not pleasing to God, but he who repents of his sins does what is most pleasing to him. There's joy in heaven when a sinner repents. Thank you for listening. God bless you all.